Before you whip out the torches and pitchforks, I'm not saying that historical swords generally weren't sharpened all the way. In fact, as far as I'm aware, the majority of swords were sharpened all the way from the guard to the point. Generalizations are generally dangerous. There's always going to be exceptions and sometimes it's hard to say straight up for sure because uh, museum curators and historians rarely describe the edge or the blade profile in great detail. But if you look around at museum pieces, it seems like most of them are sharpened throughout the length of the blade. But I don't think they had to be, really. This video is sponsored by Space, sort of. It's galaxy lamps and they make a projector that puts stars and nebulae in your home. I always like things that give your place a cozier and more atmospheric vibe. The galaxy projector allows you to customize colors, brightness and rotation speed and you can also set timers in the app or via smart assistant. There's also the galaxy lamp and moon lamp if you love lamps, brother. They've got Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales going on. You can save 50% and get an extra $60 off if you spend $200 or more. So check out galaxylamps.co slash Scalagrim. You have on some swords what's called a rakaso, which is a blunt section right here near the guard. So this one here is fairly short. And there are a number of reasons for that. The main reason is balance. If you leave more mass here, you move the balance further back, which means that the, the blade has comparatively less mass and is quicker to move. So you make the sword more agile and uh, less exhausting to swing, etc., etc. There are also other reasons. One of them is pointed out by fencing master Capofero, who says that it's basically pointless to sharpen the forte or the strong of the blade, which is the bottom third, because you're not going to do anything with it generally other than parry. When you cut, it's with the upper third for two main reasons. For one, that's where you've got the most leverage, so the most power in the cut. And two, because the sweet spot of the sword, which is the area where the sword is going to vibrate the least or not at all on impact. Usually you're going to cut like this, right? So you're not really going to go lower than the center of the blade, and that's already fairly low. If you wanted to, Cut like this, there's just not much power in it, really. There are situations where you could use the bottom third, which is if you're slicing. Like if you're up close grappling distance, then it's possible to control the opponent by putting the blade against the neck. You can kind of control <laughs> the neck or the head like this, and you can slice as well. However, the, the most important part here is controlling, like being able to push the opponent around, be it the arms or the neck. And if you do it down here, this is where you can push against it better. Because up here, the leverage is working against you. It's working in your favor for a percussive strike, but it's working against you when you're trying to push somebody. This is not really gonna work this is gonna work. Try to slice with this part, try to control my arm. No, it's not happening. I control your blade. But if you move there, now push. So in this case, if, you, if you're trying to control the opponent, then you wanna be down here anyway. And if you then draw through, you're going to eventually come up to the edge. And at this point, you've already pushed the opponent around enough. And at that point, you can start slicing. Alternatively, a slice can be done in a push cut where you start at the top of the blade and push down toward the bottom where you get more control. Or just use the other hand for support. And by the way, when you're working at grappling distance, the edge is not the only thing you can use, of course. You can give them a pommel strike, you can strike with the guard, and uh, you could also half sword and thrust, even at pretty close distance. And you can strike with the flat, there's a bunch of things you can do. And depending on the technique, you can shorten your reach in such a way that you can still cut with the upper part of the blade. So you don't absolutely need it to be sharp down here. And in fact, there are arguments to be made against 
sharpening the blade down here. Again, keep in mind, most of the time they did. But if you think about blocking an opponent's cut with your blade, which is arguably suboptimal, there are better ways like deflectional parries and cutting into the opponent's cut, et cetera, et cetera, active displacements. But sometimes you simply have to because you know, they outmaneuvered you there faster and you're just like, oh crap, you just have to put the blade between yourself and the opponent's blade. And it, it may hit here. So if you keep getting nicks and gouges in the edge here, that generally weakens the blade because the deeper a gouge goes in here, the more you're creating a weak spot where forces are being concentrated. If you have a deep nick in the blade, it's more likely to break at that point. Of course, this is going to happen anyway. There's no way, regardless of what you think about the edge versus flat debate, which we're not gonna, gonna go into, by the way. If you're interested in that, I have older videos covering that. Even if you're deathly afraid of getting your edge damaged, and you only ever parry with the flat or evade or whatever else, it's still gonna be damaged, of course. You know, with, con like if the opponent parries with their edge, it's going to damage your edge or if you strike armor, etc. So in my opinion, you can save yourself some extra work and you can make the sword potentially more durable by simply not sharpening about half of it. Because if you block or parry, it's going to be you know, from the center down, usually, because again, leverage would work against you if you tried to catch it up here. There are also statements by the Italian fencing masters Fiore dei Liberi and Filippo di Vadi about sharpening only the top half of the blade. This is specifically for armored combat. So the idea is you would either leave the bottom half unsharpened or sharpen the entire thing except a section in the middle so that you can hold on to it for half sorting, which is quite important in armored combat. But again, this is a specific case. This is particularly for a specialized sword for fighting in full suit of plate armor. So you can't really generalize that to everything. As usual, there's a lot of variation. Some historical swords have a longer or shorter ricasso, others don't have one at all. For example, the sword from the Alexandria arsenal uh, before 1419 is clearly sharpened all the way to the guard, which seems kind of pointless because you wouldn't even be able to reach that low when trying to resharpen it because the guard gets in the way. But they did it anyway. On others, they didn't. They have more of a ricasso, which again makes sense because you can't even reach it for resharpening and you don't need it to be sharp there. Um, and then there are some which are sort of a middle ground where you have a short ricasso, which is completely blunt. And then there is a grind and just kind of gradually transitions into a sharp edge. If you look at it from the side, it seems like it's pretty dull at first and then it, it kind of thins out more and more. And that seems like a good way to go about it, where you give the entire blade the general profile grind and you just don't spend as much time on sharpening near the guard. However, there are some types of sword or knife, if you will, where you do absolutely want the blade to be sharp along the entire length, like this messer right here, or a Bauernwehr, which is not just a weapon, but also a tool, a long knife. So in this case, you do want to have the edge right here, because if you wanted to cut rope, say, you, you wouldn't hold it here and, and try to slice it here. You would want to slice there where you can push better. Sure, you wouldn't want to slice your dinner with one of these. You would have a smaller knife for that purpose. But there are plenty of everyday tasks where you would use this much like a machete. And sometimes you may want to, you know, whittle or carve something that's a little bit larger where you want a heftier blade. And in that, this case, yeah, absolutely. Do go all the way. It seems that partial sharpening of the blade became more common from the Renaissance onward. And you see that particularly in the, say, 18th and 19th century, where sometimes it's specifically mentioned that a saber is only sharpened halfway down the blade. Why they didn't do that much or at all in earlier time periods, 
Who knows? Maybe they just didn't think of it. Maybe it was just a matter of, well, I'm gonna grind this blade. Well, I'm already doing it. I'm already grinding it. I might as well <laughs> go all the way. Like This could, in some cases, could be as simple as that. Or maybe they did find it important to have the bottom of the blade sharpened in order to use a slice in combat rather than other options. Hard to say, and there might have been different opinions about it back in history as well. But this is my opinion. Let me know what you think. Uh, feel free to type angrily and disagree or whatever, start fights with... Actually, don't do that. Let's try to be civil. But uh, either way, I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Stay sharp.